and Vrishabha means the bull and uh, Vati uh, signifies a woman. So the river takes its origin in the center of the city. And this is a Google image of the area. This entire green patch that you see is where the bull temple and the bugle rock park are there. And uh, there are lots of rocks in this park which are again uh, historically very old. And among these rocks and under the bull temple is uh, the origin of this river. And from here, she kind of flows underground. In uh, Kannada, we call it a Gupta Gamini, uh, where she secretly flows underground and emerges a l few kilometers away to go around a lake called the Kempa Budi Kere. Kere uh, means um, tank in Kannada. And uh, this tank itself was built by uh, Kempe Gauda, Kempe Gauda, who is known as the builder of Bangalore city. Uh, he built several tanks in the city because he was somebody who understood the topography of the land. He encouraged building of tanks and these tanks supplied water to the communities. So this tank was built by him and um, Rishabhavati flows around this tank and it is supplied uh, water by this tank to a large extent and then it comes towards Mysore, it starts flowing towards Mysore. And again, we have e at every turn and rapid and, uh, you know, as the river meanders, we have temples, we have stories, we have legends. So one more important thing is uh, as the river meanders around another um, place, there is a big temple of Lord Hanuman. And here again, the history says that uh, one sage called Vyasaraja built this because it, it was again at the confluence of the Vrishabhavati and the Suvarnamukhi tributaries. And it was on this uh, rock that the sage apparently had also done some meditation and he had found some kind of enlightenment and thought it could be a nice place for the temple. What is important here is uh, the temple is called Gali Anjaneya temple. Gali means wind. Uh, it was uh, apparently an open temple without any built structures for a long time. But as the city grew, uh, people built it up and they kind of uh, paved roads and concreted the entire region. And of course, the city grew beyond that. And today what we see here is, because we don't understand the topography of the land at all, the temple gets flooded every monsoon. And as I said, Vrishabhavati today carries a lot of the Bangalore sewage. And it is very unfortunate that if Vrishabhavati overflows, all that flooded water, which carries a lot of sewage, also enters the temple. And there is very little that can be done now. And the picture down, again, is a picture that just to show you how high the water flows every monsoon and the temple is at the same level of what you see there. And then Vrishabhavati continues to flow. We do have a sewage treatment plant uh, in the city. We have four or five sewage treatment plants, but again, all the sewage treatment plants are not working to their full capacities. They just have primary and secondary treatments that happen here. And uh, so after the primary treatment, or the secondary treatment, the water continues to flow. And there are hundreds of industries that have come up in the region, especially the western, southwestern and northwestern regions of Bangalore have been given away for industrial estates. We have uh, garment dyeing units, distilleries, we have uh, fertilizer and a whole lot of other companies which are dumping all their waste into the Vrishabhavati tributary. So as the name uh, suggests, Visha means poison in Canada. So many people uh, refer to it as the Vishabhavati and not Vrishabhavati because today it is flowing only with uh, the toxic uh, effluence of Bangalore in addition to uh, the domestic waste that it carries. And you see that all the uh, e even the floating waste kind of, you know, tends to clog uh, 
many of uh, the canals and the entire system out there. As a result, every monsoon, the roads get flooded. And there are instances in Bangalore where we've had to use coracles to pull people out of danger. Uh, this is another uh, repeat picture of how it passes through another sewage treatment plant near Bidhi. And you see how the river meanders. And again, you see how uh, in between um, the beautiful farms, you also see the city expanding. And all these are areas which have been taken over by the Bangalore Mahanagara Palike. And these are expanding with the very big projects of apartments and industries in this area. And this is another board, interesting board, which says, uh, you know, Bangalore Water Supply and Sewerage Board, where they have supposedly built a sewage treatment plant, which was a loan from the J uh, J Japanese bank. And the estimated cost is around 65 crores. And the entire construction has taken about 45.5 crores and built in about two years' time. But after so much was spent, you just saw what is happening. That entire um, water, after it passes through the very bad treatment plant, comes into another beautiful lake called the Bairamangla Lake. You see that dark blue patch of water entering the lighter blue patch. And uh, this water has become completely toxic now. And these waters, the Bairamangla water was the water that was used by farmers in South Bangalore to grow vegetables and fruits and a lot of uh, ragi and paddy are, are also grown in the region. Ragi is the finger millet that is the staple food in Karnataka and parts of Tamil Nadu. This is a more recent picture of the Bairamangla tank where uh, it is because of the wetland that has been created that some amount of uh, cleansing takes place because of the growth of these uh, uh, water hyacinth and icornia. And I will show you another picture of to show how um, dense the water is. This is actually the water. That is even after the sewer treatment and after it passes through uh, the vegetation, uh, this is the condition of um, the tributary. And it does support a lot of uh, bird population too. We, uh, we had been there on the 23rd and we saw an amazing amount of birds, such a vast variety of birds. And we were just wondering what was happening to the bird populations, if at all they had been feeding on this for a long time. There have been hundreds of studies that have been conducted on uh, Rishabhavati waters and Arkavati waters. This is an eg uh, example of the groundwater of uh, the Rishabhavati area. If you just see all the parameters from pH, chlorides, TDS, hardness, and all that, and if you take the average, uh, all the averages are much uh, pretty high. Of course, the limits that are given here are the BIS limits, which is much, much lesser than the WHO limits. So even then, it is all very high. For example, TDS is almost half the limit. Uh, total hardness is, again, very high. Uh, calcium is high. Magnesium is high. Then if you see fluoride, it is 0.87, whereas the limit is 1.5. Uh, so and there's very little that is being done despite these studies being given to the Pollution Control Board and various other departments by many people in Bangalore universities, the Indian Institute of Science, and many other research institutes. And beyond Bairamangla tank, Avrishabhavati flows in a, in a dark patch. Uh, you see that little line. This is a Google image of the region. And all around, you see the green patches, which are completely supported by uh, these waters. And there was a study from Bangalore University where they studied uh, the lead content in vegetables and uh, greenery, uh, the spinach and other things that are coming from this region. And they found that there were very high levels of lead in the vegetables grown in the area, uh, which kind of speaks for itself from where it is coming. And Vrishabhavati flows further 
and uh, she joins Arkavati and uh, Arkavati again to a large extent has become dry. Uh, I don't have a Google image of Arkavati here but Arkavati which flows from North Bangalore is a river of sand and stone today. There's not an inch of water in Arkavati and all that flows in Arkavati is the toxic sewage of Bangalore where Vrishabhavati merges and then Arkavati further comes down to meet Kaveri and uh, this confluence takes place in a town called Kanatpura which is 100 kilometers away and just before the confluence uh, takes place Bangalore draws its water from Kaveri. So I will stop here and uh, we also have a little interview uh, where we have uh, interviewed a farmer and uh, I hope oh, we can do it later. We can do it later. Uh, 